all right i think i figured it out so welcome to my um instagram live today i'll be starting a chalk lettering tutorial um basics 101 about chalk lettering in a few moments so let's just say hi to all those who joined for the so there we have paulo vince i'm the real and naughty Ooh, hi Anne. <laughs> hi russell hi Jiayu. and jofi hello hello everyone I will be starting in a few, so if you want to join in on uh, the fun and follow along the process, um, I hope you have your materials ready. And if you have any questions um, throughout the process, let me know um, in the comments and I will answer them as we go along. So today I'll be showing you how uh, we will be doing a basic chalk lettering um, using um, this type of chalk, which is the... Uh, dusty chalk or traditional chalk which is uh, what I like to call it and um, I'll be showing you the basics so you can try this at home yeah um, all right without further ado I'll just switch over my camera and then show you my desk situation hi everyone so um, if you have any questions let me know we'll be starting soon so we have the materials ready. I have my own homemade boards. I have the chalk, of course, one of the important things that I mentioned in the stories yesterday, and sharpener. We also have cloth um, and a felt, felt eraser and some tissues, okay? So not all of these are essentials, but um, I prepared some of them so I can show you some techniques that you can apply to your own work as well. This is uh, water and I have some chalk pencils too in case these are the ones that you have on hand. But um, I'll mostly be using this type of chalk. Then we also have a bunch of erasers in different sizes. And last but not the least, I have the ruler. So. This is to make straight lines, all right? If you're following along, um, raise your hands or say, um, put a thumbs up just so I know how much, uh, how many of you are following along. And um, if you have any questions as you follow along, I'll be able to answer them at that time. Yeah, hi to everyone who's still joining. All right, so now I've um, shown you all the materials that we need. Usually the boards come in just a very shiny black. Um, I've used this board before and as you can see, there are some marks over there. And uh, it really depends on the type of board, um, how you would draw on it. Um, not all chalkboards are equal. In that sense, some boards are for traditional dusty chalk and some boards are for liquid chalk. And even then, uh, even for uh, the boards that we use for normal chalk, they're also different in nature. So some of them are uh, hand painted, some of them are sprayed with um, chalkboard paint, some of them are um, stickers. So it really depends on um, the manufacturer, but different boards will have different uh, qualities. And the important thing to note about these um, chalk, chalk um, pieces of chalk would be, these would work well on a very porous surface such as um, MDFs and hardwood, yeah? <clears throat> If you were working with a liquid chalk on, on these type of boards, there would be ghosting on the boards, meaning a lot of the white ink or the colored ink will be left on the board and it's gonna be hard to clean it off after. Now, don't worry if you have um, existing boards that have uh, some marks on them, that, that's part of the appeal of chalk boards. And that's uh, what I like about them. It's because it, it grows with you over time. So yeah, so to prevent what we call ghosting or um, leaving marks on the, the board itself, most of the time, um, chalk lettering artists or chalkboard artists would recommend to season the chalkboard. 
seasoning the chalkboard means uh, we are going to prepare the surface. Imagine you're cooking, you're cooking beef. Yeah, you need to prepare the meat first before you cook it so that uh, it's ready. Hi, hi, hello, everyone. So still joining us. Um, if you have any questions, you can use um, the questions uh, feature of Instagram Live. So we're now going to season the chalk. Um, I can use a totally new chalk or I can use um, a chalk that has been uh, used before. So the main difference is um, if it's totally new out of the box, there's usually a coating outside the chalk. And um, it will take a while before that coating or that wax uh, thing uh, comes off. So what happens is, uh, because I'm using the, the one that I've used before, the coating outside has been removed already. So it's easy for me to make chalk marks on the chalkboard. So to season the chalk, you just basically put the chalk on its side and then just gently rub over the surface. So what this does is to prepare the chalkboard to receive more chalk dust from the chalk. It prevents what we call ghosting. Of course, uh, it wouldn't be perfect, perfectly uh, not uh, perfectly seasoned, but it's okay. Like I said earlier, that's part of the charm of um, working with chalk. So seasoning means we're basically putting more dust or chalk dust inside into the pores of the board. So it doesn't really leave a lot of um, stray marks once you draw on them. So what you can do now after you've uh, reasonably covered the chalkboard, it will look like this. And I can use a felt eraser or I can use um, basically any type of cloth. This cloth was from my work shirt <laughs> and uh, there were a lot of holes ready so I need to repurpose them. Let's be earth friendly, okay? So I'll wipe the chalk with the felt eraser. Now with the felt eraser, what's good about this is it wipes the surface, but it doesn't really clean it thoroughly. It's basically just spreading the dust around the board so you can play around with it later on. So I like to leave some chalk dust on the board to have uh, a very organic look. But sometimes uh, clients would prefer um, that you create uh, something that's really neat and without must, much dust and you'll have to adjust accordingly. In those cases, you don't have to season the chalk at all. But um, if they're going to reuse the chalkboard, it's still best to season the parts that you're going to draw on. So now you can see um, it's a little bit dusty with um, white chalk. The original look of the board was like this. It was very dark and shiny with chalkboard paint. So you can see the difference. Um, it's starting to have more character now with the dust settled in nicely on the pores of the board. Right, still following along. Now, what I'm gonna do is to take my chalk and show you the different marks that you can do with the chalk. So when it comes out of the box, like I mentioned earlier, there's usually a coating outside and you have to be careful with that because that's usually the cause of uh, these marks. You can see the some of the letters are quite heavy on the board and it won't come off because what happened was the paint was scratched because of the very hard surface of the chalk. So that's one of the things that you have to consider before you start. So because uh, uh, these chalk are essentially dust that has been uh, pressurized into one small piece, um, the chalk dust it's inside this uh, the stick is not really evenly distributed. Some of them will be more clumped together. Some of them will be uh, less clumpier. Uh, so you have to adjust along the way. So because of that nature of chalk, there will be some marks that will be left on the board if you're not careful enough. But yeah, that's part of uh, working with chalk. So don't worry too much about that. Yep. Hi to everyone who's still joining. Um, 
yeah so like i said earlier right um chalk is usually uh in this form but you can do all sorts of things with it to make it do what you want to do so for example earlier i i used the side to to season the surface so this is one of the things that you can do with chalk you can create dusty textures using this side and then erasing it to create this type of feel you can use it on its tip to create the usual marks that we know or if um, you're using the blunt tip you can create really thick thick marks one of the tips that um, i can give you when you start doing chalkboard the mic is muted the mic's back on the mic is muted hi speaker <laughs> right now it's muted all right so i'm gonna sharpen the chalk and this is one of the things that gives people an aha moment you sharpen chalk why it's because if i want to create fine lines of course i cannot use a blunt chalk because a blunt chalk leaves marks like this yeah leaves a blunt mark and if i use the side i'll leave a different type of mark but if i want to create fine details i want to sharpen the chalk to be able to create those fine details so for this um, demonstration and quick tutorial i'll be doing four letters for the word home let's just draw a few guidelines to help us Right. Now we have uh, the top and the bottom line for the ascender and the descent, uh, the baseline. We will have the X height. Okay, it's not entirely okay. I'll move it down. Yeah. So now we have four lines to sort of um, mark our lines when we start drawing them. So I'll do the word home for stay home, but I'll do it in four different styles so you can see how versatile chalk can be. Even this stick can do a lot of things. All right, so hi everyone to still joining. Oopsie, sorry, I clicked the, yep. Yeah. Now we're back on my screen. I'll create four letters. So I'll draw the letters like this, so. Because the board is a bit small, so I have to compensate some of the letters so it will fit nicely on the board. But don't worry about making mistakes because that's part of uh, chalk work. It's easy to erase, so don't worry about it. All right. So I have four letters, H-O-M-E. So I wouldn't worry too much about how perfect the letters are. Uh, we're not going through how to draw the letters today. It's just uh, how to use the chalk to draw the letters that we're focusing on. So now that I have these four letters, what I'll do first for the H is try to create thicker lines. Notice that the sharpened chalk is really very fine, so I can create really thin lines without, without being too hard on the board. Notice that I'm holding the chalk really lightly, I'm just slowly gliding over the board. Right now that we have the skeleton of the H, I can sharpen the chalk a bit more just to create um, finer lines. What I can do now is I want to create only the outline of the H, so I'll remove the chalk dust inside of the letter. So I can use my fingers to do that. 
I'm not worried about the dust because we've seasoned the chalk and there's dust all over the board so it will look still okay. So I'm now cleaning the inside with my finger. Yeah. But if I want to clean it a little bit more, I can use a really clean uh, cotton tip, cotton swab, and then gently gloss over the board. You can see that some of the parts are slowly turning more black. If you want to lift more chalk dust, you can apply a little bit of water on the board or on the cotton tip and then slowly gloss over a bit more to create a really black black so this is one of the tips that you can uh, follow so i as i mentioned earlier i'll basically just do the outline of the h i'll use a really sharp tip of the chalk and mark go over the outline with a heavier stroke so imagine I'm using a blunt chalk for this. I wouldn't be able to do all those fine lines, but because I sharpened the chalk, I'm able to deliberately go over the outline without worrying too much about rotating the chalk. So notice I'm also slightly rotating the chalk once in a while. It's because I want to keep the sharpened tip right where I want to write it. And as I'm writing, I'm trying to get a feel of how compact the chalk dust was put in this stick because, like I mentioned earlier, it's not constant. And sometimes there will be harder lines, sometimes there will be smoother lines, and the, the chalk will break easily on some parts. So you have to be a little bit more mindful of that. So now that we have the outline of the H, what I want to do is to create um, an outline outside. I want to sh drop the shadow on the H, but um, not fully drop. So I'll just create an outline for the H very lightly. So this is one way to create um, dynamic letters in your own pieces. So I'll just imagine that the H has a shadow that's casted on this uh, on the paper. So this is one way to create your shadows. Now we have the letter H. Okay. So the tips for this would be uh, sharpen the chalk and uh, you can use a cotton swab to create a darker effect. Later, we'll go back to the letter H to show you a little bit more what you can do, how to embellish and how to uh, make, your, make your letters pop a bit more. Right. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section or in the questions uh, Q&A section. We'll answer them later. Yep, so for the O, I'm also doing the same thing. Just slowly going over the lines. Now I want to remove the center marks. So I'll just uh, use my finger for that. Then I want to make the inside circle of the O. So I'm going to do it a little bit slowly. Yeah, so that's what's good about this is if you, if you make mistake, it's easy to it's easy to erase it. So yes, um, seeing C was asking, yes, uh, sharpen the chalk using a sharpener. So I usually get those um, dual ones. So I can sharpen a pencil and my chalk here. To create uh, a different style for the O, what I want to do is to create an inline. So I, I just quickly blow, blow the dust out of the way and then I'll use my 
cloth to clean the inside a little bit. So uh, I mentioned earlier, you can use cloth, you can use um, cotton swabs. I just want to clean the inside a little bit more before I do the inline. Yeah, so just be careful, but not too careful. Um, you can always go over the lines after. So as you notice, the O is starting to be a little bit darker than the rest of the board. So I'll just go over one more time. So I can create contrast in the lettering piece. So now that I have um, the inside cleaned, I can just quickly go over the outline one more time. And I'll do the inline just to make it a little bit interesting. So this is one way you can add creativity and dimension to your letters when you do it at home, right? So the H has, uh, it's pretty thick and the O is quite small. And this has a, a shadow in it and I want to make it evenly distributed. So I'll put a different kind of shadow in the O. So this one is really a drop shadow, so I'll just so I'm imagining that the light source is somewhere here, and it shines through the letters, creating the cast shadow. So I'm, I'm just blowing the dust once in a while so I can see what's underneath. So now we have two letters. Um, don't worry about first two letters first, I will go back to that and add more details later on. For now, let's go to the M. For the M, I'll just thicken it a little bit. So one of the tips when you're working with chalk is if you, you're comfortable uh, drawing things freehand, you can always do what I'm doing now. I'm just uh, lightly going over the lines with um, a really sharpened chalk. But if you're not too comfortable doing this, what you can do is to trace uh, on a paper. So you may have your design ready printed out and then you just um, put chalk marks at, at the back or uh, charcoal at the back so you can just put the paper on top of the board and slowly trace the letters and then you will have perfectly nice letters. So now I'll just clean this part a little bit. So for the M, I'm thinking of coloring the whole M, a whole inside of the M. So. I can do that with the side of this chalk or I can use the blunt part of the chalk as well to make really heavy strokes. So you can take advantage of the different qualities of the chalk when you're creating your piece. So a, a while ago, we used the sharpened chalk to create the outlines. Now I'm using the blunt part of the chalk to color the letter in. So now it really depends on the quality of the chalkboard or the characteristics of the board that you have. Some of the boards will allow you to create really opaque lines, while some of the boards will only allow you to kind of um, create very, very uh, translucent lines. 
and it's really dependent on the board that you're using. <gasps> right? So now we have the M. I want to clean it a bit using a cotton, sw cotton swab just to make sure the lines are straight and it's not too messy. Yep. Then the lines, uh, the grid, I can just use my finger, right? Now we have the letter M. What we can do about this is uh, to have a single line shadow. Creates a little bit of dimension to the piece. So we'll go back to the rest of the letters, uh, to the, the first three letters later. Let's just finish off the word for now. So for E, I want to keep it simple. I'm just gonna do a full calligraphy letter here. Full calligraphy means, uh, literally means fake calligraphy. I'll just simulate how a calligraphy pen looks by making the downstrokes thicker and horizontal and upstrokes uh, lighter, thinner. Now we have our four letters. I'm gonna start cleaning off the board so I can focus on creating those embellishments and details in the letters. So as you can see, there will, s there will still be some chalk dust that's gonna be left on the board. So don't worry about that. That's part of uh, doing chalk work. Uh, I want to leave a bit of chalk dust there so it looks organic and natural but if you want it to be really black then you can always wipe it with a damp cloth. Right now for the insides uh, for this for the other lines I can just use my my finger to gently remove some of those lines. Remember to wipe your finger with a clean tissue or cloth to, to make sure you're taking the dust out of the board and not just spreading it. Yeah, did we leave any behind? I think that's about right. So what we can do now is I want to show you Hi for those uh, still joining us. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. So I'm showing you how to do a basic chalk lettering at home. So what we can do for the first letter is I want to show you how to create um, a gradient sort of uh, texture inside the letter. So I'll use the blunt end of the chalk to color the inside in. So I'm gonna fade it into black for the top part. So the bottom would be fully white and then slowly fade it into black. So as you can see, I'm using a gentle force, a gentle stroke to do one stroke at a time, slowly going up. Then for this one too, I can just uh, color the horizontal bar 
and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other letter. So don't forget to blow the dust out once in a while so you can see how much surface you have covered already. So there's another question. Does this require any fixative medium? Okay, so if you're not going to touch it and you want to leave it for a long time, you can just, uh, if you're not touching it or you know, you, you're sure that no one's going to touch it, you can just leave it as is. So it's fine. You only use a fixative if you want it to make, uh, to be permanent. Then if I want to create a little bit more dimension, I can use my finger to slowly dab and dilute the chalk. So to, just to create some gradient texture and then go over the middle portion a little bit more just so I can make sure that the gradient is smooth now we have the gradient it's easy you can do it in a few minutes but of course it it doesn't have to be perfect. It will take a bit of practice to do it, to make it perfect. Yep. Yes, uh, thank you for that comment. You can also use soft and hard bristle paint brushes to create various effects. That's a really good tip. So for the second letter, I just want to create lines on the shadows. That's one simple way to do the shadow. Now onto the M, I want to show you a different technique. So I'm just basically going through a bunch of things that you can do to make your letters pop and to make it a little bit um, unique when you do your own pieces at home. So I want to introduce a, a black line in the middle. So sort of like the O here. I want to introduce a monoline inside the M, but you're may, you may be wondering how we can do that because you're already colored in the whole letter. We can always use the cotton swab to, to remove the dust inside. So we'll just go over it with a clean cotton. So note that we will have to do this a few times just to get the dust out. You can also wet the tip of the cotton to grab a little bit more dust along the way. Right? I can also do the same thing to... Okay, we'll do that later. Uh, we'll clean the, uh, the piece later on. So now you can see that um, the inside has been cleared up, but um, that's only part of the process. To me, if I want it to be really black, I can use an eraser to go over the remaining chalk dust to make sure that I didn't leave anything inside. just to make it a little bit more contrasting. So I'm using a really small eraser for this. Now we have the letter M. And finally, what we can do for the E is just a very simple shadow with uh, lines 
similar to this, but it's just going to be the lines. Then I can thicken some parts of the letters to just make the letters pop a bit more. Now, if you notice for today's um, today's lesson, um, we only use white chalk, and even with white chalk, you can create various effects to make the letters pop. So you don't have to rely on colors to make your letters more interesting. So I'm showing you four different ways to make your letters more interesting. I wouldn't say the plain letters, uh, vanilla letters are not interesting, but for some people, they prefer having decorations and embellishments more. So yeah, I'm just showing you a bunch of ways how to do it. Yeah, um, Bansi, I hope you're, I'm saying your name right. Um, she's saying that uh, you can use sandpaper as a base for your chalk art. Yes, that's also true. Um, but um, you'll just uh, be using more chalk because it's it's very rough. Therefore, you'll, you'll need to sharpen it a bit more if you want uh, finer lines. But you can also do that if you're into it. Does this work with using black papers instead of chalkboards? Um, for black papers, I wouldn't really recommend doing the seasoning anymore um, as you probably won't reuse the black paper anymore. So you can just use black paper and some chalk pencils to go over the letters or whatever you're trying to do in a chalk style. All right. Now, for the last step, we'll just basically clean out some of the parts to make it pop a little bit more. So I'm just going to use the cotton swab again to just clean up. This, the shadows to introduce a little bit more contrast to the piece. So notice that I'm using water because water will take much of the dust out of the board. But of course, it's also important to use a clean, a clean cotton or clean paper. So it lifts up all the dust away. this one simple way to create more contrast so as you can see most of the chalkboard is a little bit dusty because of the seasoning that we did earlier and we spread the chalk dust using the felt er eraser but now because we used a clean cotton with water on it we lifted much of the chalk onto the shadow so you can see that the letter is really popping up So I'm just gonna do the same thing on the inside of the O just to clean the rest of the dust out and make the O pop too. Oops, I forgot the inside. So don't be afraid if you're erasing some of the parts because you can always go over them later. I'm gonna wet it a bit more just to take a bit more of the chalk dust for the M. Yep. 
now we've taken most of the dust out as you can see the letters are starting to pop a little bit more so these are just some of the techniques that you can use for your own work at home yeah so that's it um this is what it looks like now we've used basically just the chalk and some tools to help us make a little bit more interesting so hi hello everyone hi my oops i flipped the camera so yeah this is um one of the ways that you can do your own chalkboards at home i've showed you different kinds of uh, techniques to help you make the letters pop a little bit and to create interesting designs into your own lettering work so for the first letter, we, we used a sharpened chalk to create the outlines and we used the blunt chalk to go over the inside of the letter and make a little gradient. We used um, this cotton to clean the shadow and to make the letter pop a bit more against the dusty board. For the letter O, we used the sharpened chalk as well to create the outlines to create the monoline uh, inside the letter. And we also use the sharpened chalk to create the shadow. For the M, initially we just sketched lightly with the chalkboard, uh, with the chalk, using very sharpened chalk as well. We filled in the whole letter with chalk, the blunt chalk. And then for the inside line, we used the cotton swab as well to go over it a few times once most of the chalk is gone we use this eraser to lift off the remaining dust inside the letter and finally for the letter e we just use the sharpened chalk to gently go over the letter and then we use the fall calligraphy style to make sure that we thicken the downstrokes and leave the upstrokes very thin. For the shadows, we also used a very sharpened chalk. So yeah, this is a, a really quick way to do a sign for your home. You don't have to use a chalkboard. You can use um, a black paper with some chalk pencils that you can um, get from the art shop or you can use chalk as well. So don't worry about the materials. You can basically use your, your wall as well as your chalk chalkboard. Yeah, do you have any more questions before we wrap up the session? Nope. So if there's no more questions, um, I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've gotten some text tips and techniques that you can apply to your own work while we're all at home quarantine or on lockdown. Singapore just assumed, uh, uh, I mean, Singapore just announced uh, the extension of the circuit breaker. So we're going to be home for a long, longer period of time. And yeah, this is uh, one way to stay positive and be, stay sane during this time. Wait, uh, I have a few more questions that popped up. Use other colors. Yes, you can use other colors, definitely. Uh, but for this Instagram Live, we only focus on using white, so I can show you the techniques without being distracted by the colors. Wet chalk. I am not sure what you're asking, but is it the liquid markers, the chalk markers? Um, those uh, markers are acrylic-based and you can use them for chalkboards that allow uh, liquid acrylic paint on it. So for these type of boards, it will be difficult to use those liquid chalk because it will ghost permanently. Hold on, let me just get a, a sample for you. So I've been experimenting on my own chalkboards and I've been trying to find a way to create a chalkboard that's both usable for 
dusty chalk and liquid chalk so i've been trying on different paints at home for the past few months and if you use liquid chalk for for a chalkboard that's not really meant to be used for a, as a liquid chalk it's gonna ghost permanently it's, it's like paint you can't remove it even if you like wet the surface and wipe it it won't come off so when this happens um there's no other choice but to repaint the board all right any other questions before i wrap up the session so once again this is the final piece that we did today all right thank you so much to everyone who joined um i hope you learned something today and yeah i'll let you know when i host another instagram live if you have any anything that you want me to go over in the future instagram lives or in my youtube channel um, do let me know because i always um, create new content as well specifically on my youtube channel so if you haven't subscribed yet um go over to my youtube channel i'll i hope i recorded everything so i'll post it over there as well and if you haven't or you're still bored this is what i did um two weeks back when i was bored i basically painted my tumbler my hydro flask tumbler using posca paint and uh fixative so if you want to see how that went and how you can do your own customization go over to my youtube channel so the link is in my bio unfortunately i have don't i don't have the swipe up feature yet so i can't link that in my stories but you can go over to my bio to check how i did this on my youtube channel all right thank you so much everyone i'll give you back um the rest of the day all right see you again bye bye